how to prepare for quantitative easing and hyperinflation. Today we will discuss how to make money in this difficult environment, how to navigate in this difficult environment and first of all what will happen with the investments after the crisis and today we learn how to manage these effects of money printing, hyperinflation and quantitative easing. Stay tuned! Caputo and Partners SwissBankingLawyers.com We fight for your money. My name is Enzo Caputo. I'm the international private banking lawyer, the owner of Caputo and Partners and the blog SwissBankingLawyers.com The place where successful international business people find tips and solutions how to better protect their money with Swiss banks and pay less tax. Stay with us. We fight for your money. Today we have a special guest in our show. His name is Oliver Schedel. He is Swiss asset manager based in Geneva, Switzerland. And he will tell us what we have to do to survive the effects of money printing, inflation, quantitative, e quantitative easing and whatever we will have to face with. Thank you, Olivier, for being with us today. Hello, Enzo. Thank you for having me. Great pleasure. So what is, what is the best way to protect clients' money in this difficult environment and what we have to do to be on the safe side after the crisis, when everything is finished, after we survive the effects of this corona, because the world will, will continue even if this, this uh, crisis is, uh, will be, is terminated. We saw when they invented the vaccine, we, we saw in the markets, the market reacted very heavily uh, at that time when they invented the vaccine, correct? Yes, correct. Um, we are in very interesting times yeah. right now. Um, it's a combination actually of different factors. We had before the COVID crisis already over indebtedness by many countries. Yeah. Um, but then, and, and, and obviously also a very sluggish economy. Um, with the COVID crisis, things got from uh, bad to worse. Um, the COVID crisis uh, triggered huge additional injection of money into the system. It never happened before. This it, is the biggest this, injection in history. In history, this uh, uh, is, is an, uh, undoubtedly the, the biggest injection. And that has obviously consequences. Um, let, let's maybe quickly face a little bit what has been done so far and what uh, will likely come. Yeah. Um, you remember a few years back there was quantitative easing which kicked in. What is quantitative easing? Uh, quantitative easing is an unorthodox policy taken by a central bank in a situation where a low interest rate situation does not suffice to kickstart the economy. So if a, if a country, if a, a central bank would like to uh, get higher growth and it can't do it through the normal way of lowering interest rates, then the central bank does something which is called quantitative easing, which means the central banks buys on the market government bonds and now even bonds from corporations from uh, all over the world. And that has an effect because a central bank like the Fed, who does that on a very large scale, um, uh, takes these securities from the market and that has an effect that interest rates go even lower. Yeah. And that should normally be good for the economy because the lower the interest rates, the cheaper is it for corporations to get indebted and to use the funds for productive uh, uh, investments. Yes, yes. The problem is that uh, this whole quantitative easing uh, policy has not had exactly the effect which had been um, anticipated. Uh, because in a way a lot of corporations took the money 
uh, at very, very low interest rates, of course. If you can get indebted at, at zero or 0 0.2% uh, percent per annum, uh, very it's very money. easy. Very cheap money. But what do you do with the money? Yeah. So intelligently, they would have invested into production uh, facilities, new factories, whatever, or new market strategies. Yes. But a lot of, fa uh, a lot of uh, companies have used the money to buy back their own shares. Uh -huh, I see. So you have less shares in the market and when, you have, when something is scarce, then the price goes up. Uh -huh. That explains why the markets have been so stunningly uh, 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 positive last yeah. year. And the shares and went up, and the shares went up. And even yes. the companies who produced products, people is imprisoned in the, in the houses, in their apartments, they cannot consume, so they cannot buy, they cannot spend money. And this is also a handicap. This is typical of the COVID time. So even if the production is high, the people, they don't travel, they don't, uh, they don't spend money. And we saw this when they invented the vaccine. The companies who recovered the most were exactly the airlines, the, the, the tourist industry, that went uh, and these kind of things, yes? Yeah. No, true. Uh, Covid has uh, made the whole thing much more complicated. Um, as Enzo just said, um, some sectors have highly profited yeah. from Covid. Uh, all the online uh, 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 businesses, uh, they have had a very, very good time. Uh, those who were um, in, a, in a much worse situation is the retail business. Yeah. You don't go to malls anymore. You don't spend your money in the street and on the high street. Um, you don't travel. Uh, you, you have a few uh, areas which have been extremely hurt. Yeah. That might get back to normal within the next few years, provided we have a real uh, uh, effective vaccine. Yeah. Um, however, um, the, the overall economy is not doing very well, yeah. uh, as, as you are aware of. So it is logical that the central banks keep on applying their policy of zero or negative interest rates, yeah. because that's the only way companies can really get money cheap and do something to to uh, uh, get growth back on track. What does that mean for the investor? So how should an investor in, invest right now? Which are the good shares, the winning shares, or which are good investments and which investments are bad investments? So which investments he has to do to be on the safe side and to be protected? Are these bonds, are these shares, or these real estate, or what do you recommend? What are you recommending, very practically speaking? What are, you have many clients, uh, you were bank director of a, of a renowned Swiss bank, now you have your own boutique as a management company. What is the investments you are suggesting to your clients? What are you doing for your client concretely in this environment? How sh do they invest? I will, I, will, I will give you a few uh, uh, hints. First of all, you have to see if you invest with a time horizon of, let's say, one year, one and a half years, or even a few months, and how to prepare for three, four years when the situation might be very, very different. Right now, we have the second wave COVID, but we have the announcement of a vaccine. Yeah. So what happened? Everybody, what happened? What happened? Exactly. Well, I want everybody to know got what happened at that day when we had the vaccine, the announcement of the new vaccine. What happened? In everybody the got very excited, of course. So pharmaceutical stocks went up, but all the battered stocks like airlines, um, uh, airport management companies, uh, travel agencies, uh, the retail business, all these stocks went up. Because they say, ah, we have a vaccine, we're going to go back to normal. Because they suffered so much. Exactly. And, that, they, and they were undervalued. Uh, undervalued, clearly. and now they recover it suddenly right. in one day. And what we Can saw... Can give also some the, examples of companies? I, I will give you right, right away. But on yeah. the other side also, what people sold were yeah. those which were the high flyers uh, during the, uh, crisis. The, the COVID crisis. 
uh, all the uh, internet stocks, uh, the Netflix, uh, Zoom. Uh, Zoom, all these companies uh, which profited from uh, the, 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 the COVID restrictions, they got hurt. Um, now, what we did um, actually yesterday, <laughs> um, we think that this euphoria is a little bit premature. We can be happy that something is on the way. With the vaccine. To, yes, the vaccine. but you have to uh, 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 re remember, it will take six to nine months to roll out in European countries and in America the, the vaccine um, uh, uh, project. But think about all the other countries in, in South America, in Africa, in parts of Asia. This is going to take much longer. So that means we have to survive, we have to live yes. with COVID. So it's yes. not a problem we can solve from one day to the other with the vaccine like that, because even if we have a vaccine, the vaccine has to be tested and retested. So we are in a very early stage with that vaccine. And even if the vaccine is successful, we will not solve the problem in, uh, in the next few weeks. So what we did yesterday is we took, and that is not often the case, but we took a six month view. We said in the next six months there will be most probably a third wave and still lockdown, still difficult uh, conditions until the vaccine is being rolled out. And to prepare for that we have again uh, done a basket of shares, about 30 or 40 shares in, in that basket, yeah. uh, of companies who normally do profit from uh, this uh, lockdown scenario, uh -huh. but that is so the, IT companies, right? E-commerce, but not only. We had we bought back Zoom, we bought back Netflix at much lower levels. Uh, we bought uh, ST Loader, for at example, lower level, at, very at lower, lower level yeah. uh, levels. Uh, some uh, pharmaceutical stocks and so on. Um, but that's a six months approach. Yeah. What we are much more um, worried of is we're not sure whether the economy will be able to really recover even with a vaccine to where it was before. Um, you have to see there is so much liquidity in the markets. Exceptionally. Uh, much. So much debt. I mean Italy has now so much debt that some rating agency uh, uh, are, are thinking of putting them on a rating of triple B, uh, uh, double B, I'm sorry. Double B means junk status. Yeah. Uh, South Africa is in a junk status. A lot of other countries are very close to that. To the junk status, And that yeah. is very dangerous because yeah. in a developed world, an economy lives from the trust in the government and in the central bank. But if the indebtedness is uh, rising to such levels that it is not sustainable and that you can foresee that future generations might not even be able to pay back these debts. We fight for your money. Yeah. What is going to happen? So there are different scenarios. Indebtedness, first of all, um, has one effect. It cuts your trust or the, the public's trust into yeah. the government and into the institutions. And uh, that means also that you, if you buy now a, a government bond at 0.2% um, uh, interest, you might not be prepared to, le to, to lend your money to the government for the same amount of interest. You want maybe 2% or 3% or 5% or much, much more. Because there is more risk if they stay. Because there is yeah. much more risk yeah. because you realize that the government Trust. might not be able to reimburse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is talk also of hyperinflation. What is hyperinflation? Hyperinflation is an inflation which is rapid, excessive, uh, which is out of control, so wh where the government cannot intervene very easily to stop it. Yeah. It happened uh, long ago in the Weimar Republic in, in 1923, yeah. uh, but it happened in Venezuela not long ago, it happened in Zimbabwe a few times, it happened in Argentina. So 
um, uh, this is something which can happen uh, everywhere. Yeah. And if you, we are in, a, in a, a situation like this, either of lack of trust or of hyperinflation or both together. What, uh, what do you have to do then? What, what, well, what, what do you tell to your clients? What? Quite clearly, um, in such an environment, and we are positioning ourselves already partially into uh, uh, these gold, markets. For example. All, 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 I yeah. think gold is a very good example. Yeah. Uh, gold and silver, precious metals. Also, commodities or commodity stocks, copper, uh, uh, whatever um, is, is, is a commodity uh, which is sought after. Uh, you can uh, name real estate. Yeah. Real estate is a very good hedge against inflation. Um, you can uh, have, if you have that type of money, you can buy vintage cars, you can buy art, uh, you can buy wines. Uh, the hard assets, all these are what you call hard assets. Physical hard assets. Hard assets is yeah. the best way of uh, uh, hedging yourself against uh, uh, hyperinflation. Yeah. Um, and even if we do not have hyperinflation, because there is nothing pointing right now towards that, but it's yeah. maybe too early days. Yeah. Uh, if you are in a situation of over indebtedness in terms of countries accumulating too much debt like and look what happened now in, in during covid where you had these packages of trillions of dollars helicopter thrown money. out yeah. into helicopter the, money like a helicopter yeah, and the helicopter money comes on 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 a on a on a, 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 a additional um, as an additional measure, yeah. helicopter money is really physical money, not thrown out of a helicopter, but given out by the government to the public. Uh, in America, it happened. Uh, it might happen in, 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 um, Europe. in, in, in Europe. Yeah. You have to see if you are in a situation where, the, where COVID makes stop totally the economy to a very hard lockdown, People will suffer. They will have no means to pay for their food, for their uh, 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 schools, uh, for their children, for for you know whatever basic things they have to finance. Yeah. And they will need the help of the government. But where does the government take the money? They don't have the money. They print it. And uh, together with the central bank, as they, you can see, Italy, they, you know, Italy is, absolutely. The, is the biggest receiver of, yeah. Euro, of European money. Yeah. Italy became so, is becoming so much money from Europe as never before. There is another way of protecting against inflation in case, yeah. uh, and that has worked already very well with tips. Tips are actually inflation indexed or linked government bonds. They are issued by uh, uh, the American uh, government, but their interest rate is, or their return is linked to the expectation of the inflation in future. So if people think what they start to think that inflation might be a problem, uh, the expectation of inflation goes up and therefore your return on these tips goes up. This is actually quite good. The higher interest rates go, the higher your return. So it's, it's an it's a inflation-linked investment, yes. basically. Of course, you need the trust that the government pays you back. Yeah. Uh, they will pay the, 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 the coupons, probably, yeah. for your immediate return. But will you be seeing the capital? Yeah. You don't I know. Had, yeah, I had a very interesting development in the, in the last days, especially now when um, Trump lost the election. I received uh, every day since the Biden is the new president, every day I receive many phone calls from the United States of America. They want to open accounts in Switzerland. They want to know more about how to become a European passport, how to get a second citizenship. So they are very scared what is happening in America. The Americans more and more normal people, they would like to open an account in Switzerland just because they don't trust in the government. They don't trust in the government. They are scared. 
You know, I think people are very, very allergic to governments which take over the public's uh, earnings, their savings, uh, their means of living. That's what you call financial repression. Uh -huh. What happened a few years back, I think it was 2011, during the Euro crisis in Cyprus. You wake up on a Monday morning and you see that your bank account has been drawn by 20% of what you had by the government, by the central bank. So they take 20% away overnight from whatever you have in your bank account. Can you imagine? Then. You wake up in the morning and you lose your money because the bank has taken away your bank account. That's incredible. That's confiscation. That's financial repression. In, the same happened also in Lebanon, in Beirut. In Lebanon, Just yesterday in Argentina I had a call from, also. In Argentina you know, also. Yeah. You are an entrepreneur. You export something. You expect dollars to come in for the payment of the goods you exported. And the government say, well, you don't get the dollars. We take the dollars, we give you pesos. Yeah. But pesos at a very low rate. Yeah. And the pesos is going down and down and down. So it's not very interesting for these people to do that. That so is that's financial why, repression. That's financial repression. And to avoid, to circumvent the problems and the effects of financial repression, you should open a, a bank account in Switzerland. Because at the moment, Switzerland is a very safe country because the world is becoming insecure. The world is becoming insecure and I feel it every day when I become phone calls from the United States, from all over the world. Yesterday I became a phone call from Argentina. Also, they are afraid. So they want to have a safe heaven. They want to have a safe place like Switzerland to have an account, to have multi-currency accounts and to do their investments managed by professional people like, uh, like Olivier. You know, and so um, Switzerland has been a financial place for uh, a, a very long time. And it's not by, years or even it's more, not by coincidence. Yeah, it's not First coincidence. of all, it has a responsible government. It has the rule of law. It has checks and balances uh, within the, the institutions. It has a very strong banking tradition. Yeah. Uh, the quality of our banks are, 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 is very good. And it has um, observed always a policy uh, in terms of indebtedness, which was very reasonable. Uh -huh. uh, we were paying back our debt in the last, during the last 10 years. Which other country has been doing this? Uh -huh. Not one. Uh -huh. uh, Switzerland has been doing that. And now, uh, with very low debt, during the COVID crisis, Switzerland has been able to spend a few billion, uh, a few dozen billion actually, to support, uh, to support the, the public and, and uh, the, the commerce economy, because it could afford it. It could afford it. Other countries it, cannot afford other it. Other countries cannot afford it. You know, in Europe, budget pro all countries in Europe have budget problems, except Switzerland, Liechtenstein and Norway. All the rest have this kind of problems. And this is a very positive point for a jurisdiction to bank with. So I would never bank, I would never advise somebody to bank in Dubai unless for specific reasons. So there are no alternatives to Switzerland. I think Switzerland is still a very, very good place yeah. to bank. Um, uh, first of all, if you are a non-Swiss citizen and uh, you're domiciled in another country, you might wish to have part of your savings of your assets which you have put aside for your rainy days into a jurisdiction where your own government cannot just uh, 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 put his um, hand on and yeah, interfere. Exactly. So I think that makes uh, perfect sense and uh, the, the know-how here in Switzerland is such that the, the money is looked after in a very professional and trustworthy uh, way. That's the reason in recent days we are opening so many accounts. So every day we receive phone calls. Even this morning, I already received three phone calls this morning with account opening requests. And this was not the case before the COVID crisis, but the people is scared. The world has become more insecure. Thank you very much. So, Olivier, for uh, giving us all uh, this uh, interesting information. If you like more information just like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
you know, information just like this you cannot find in the internet, not in bibliotheques, not in libraries. If you like more information just like this, just subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the subscribe button and ring the bell. By doing so, you will never miss a new video. Thank you very much for your attention. Stay rich and be rich. I wish you a wonderful day. Stay safe. Bye-bye.